From the Denver Broncos Media Center, welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. Broncos Country Tonight, training camp rolling on. We are through five days of practice out there. And Benjamin, the pads are coming on tomorrow. Very excited about that. We had shells today. A little bit of popping going on out there. Seems like the guys are ready to start hitting. Yeah, I saw Caden Sturds get in there on a run play. Look like these guys are getting ready. They they want to hit. Uh, so I think that uh, I think getting the full the full pads on tomorrow. I think that's going to be big. I think these guys have been bottling up this aggression for a while. Get a chance to let it out. Yeah, we uh, we saw some of the linebackers getting up there. You mentioned it, the safeties looking forward to those opportunities. One of the best matchups. There's no question about it. Out of training camp, it's been sort of the heavyweight fight is between Cortland Sutton and Pat Sertan, and Today's Sertan, I say overall, got the best. Sutton got the one catch uh, in the end zone late in practice, but overall, very impressive to see those two going back and forth. It's only going to make them both better. Yeah, and and you know we we're treated to a show every day, getting to see one of the top corners in the league and you know, a young up and comer, Pat Sertan, going up against Cortland Sutton and the battles that they're having. It's uh, it's it's fun to see that out there and it will it'll make both guys better both these guys are going to have to go up against talent uh, over the course of the season they're going to be lined up against the number ones uh, over the course of the season so uh, going head to head every day in practice I think it's good for both of them you wonder for Pat Sertan and and again Corlin Sutton is a specific body type of receiver that he should be matched up against but you do wonder a little bit if if you'd give some opportunities or this is something that Nathaniel Hackett would scheme up to get him on Jerry Judy because it's such a different style of wide receiver. And there are some of these really elite route running wide receivers that they're going to be matched up against, including a guy like Devontae Adams. Yeah, I, I think it'd be good to, to do that. They've been using Judy mostly out of the slot, though, so far. Yep. That's obviously not where Sertan is lined up. So uh, if you're trying to make a concerted effort to do that, um, I, I think you, you have to do that. You have to, you have to put Judy in positions other than where you been lining him up lately so I think they want to get him comfortable with the slot and the slot work uh, Judy that is and so I think that uh, uh, getting him reps against Sertan is probably a, a secondary or tertiary concern low key though one of the things that you like seeing out there is Russell Wilson again the kind of coach on the field and I know we say that a lot when it comes to the veteran elite quarterbacks but there was a moment during practice where Russ didn't like some kind of thing that happened with Cortland Sutton out there it seemed like and so when special teams went to practice Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton just basically practiced the same route over and over and over again in the red zone. Yeah, trying to get that timing down. They were they were having their own private throwing session out there. It was just Russ, just Cortland. Um, you know, trying to get I think trying to get the timing down exactly on that out uh, because that's what it was. It was a, an out to the right hand side to the uh, to the end zone, and I think they just want to be perfect. They both want you know it's a game of inches, and and that means throws and routes and everything else. And so I think they want to make sure they've got everything down as far as the timing and the placement. Thought Baron Browning had another really spectacular practice. And you and I sort of debated this a bit on Broncos Country Tonight, the radio show. And you can check that out again uh, wherever you get your podcast. Baron Browning could change a little bit of the formula for the Broncos. It's possible if he has a, a big time season or it's, it's a big time preseason where the Broncos feel like, hey, we got to get this guy on the field a lot. They have some decisions to make with Bradley Chubb this upcoming year. So Baron Browning, who could be kind of in a bit of that Micah Parsons role, could also be a full-time edge for the Broncos. And if that ends up being the case, you can kind of change the way you view that position, not only for the season, but even to the future. Yeah, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, obviously they drafted Nick Benito to be that as well. So that the team is looking for leverage in case uh, Bradley Chubb plays really well. They can't afford to pay him, moves on, that kind of thing. So uh, I, I think that's that's part of the case with Baron Browning. I mean, him playing well, and continuing to play well, it just gives you another option. You know, you do have Malik Reed, who's going to be on a two and a half million dollar uh, bonus is the, the minute he lands on the roster. So uh, on uh, day two of regular season. So you, you got to make sure you're hedged against that, too. So I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think there are some options there. I don't know that he's going to be a full time edge this year. I think he's going to move around a bit, but I, I think he's got the potential. He's certainly showing it early in camp. We've got to see KJ Hamler back out there. Came off the pup today. Not working with teams just yet. They're going to ease him back in. But, boy, that's such a good sign. What is it about, and I was asked this earlier uh, by uh, Ross on our station, what is it about K.J. Hamler that that is is so different and and adds so much to this offense? Well, it's his elite speed. I mean, he's one of the fastest guys on the team, if not the fastest. And uh, that vertical speed is something that you can't coach. No matter what you do, you can't, you know, you, you can't make somebody faster really uh it's it's difficult to do so uh, you know i think having that that dimension i think is good and good for him to, to you know to come out after practice in the presser and talk yeah. about his talk about his struggles and how he you know he had to put the time and investment in to get right and all that kind of stuff so 
no, I thought that was really powerful stuff. Very vulnerable, which is great. Oftentimes, don't get a chance to see that side of the players. And, and you hit it right there. They're the elite speed. I think he's a good route runner, too. I think sometimes his, his route running gets a little bit uh, missed in our evaluation of K.J. Hamler. And think about him as just a nine route guy or mm-hmm. a guy that's just trying to take the top off. He can do more than that. And we we saw flashes of it last year before his injury. I, I sort of think that the Broncos want to be able to, again, Corlin Sutton, Tim Patrick, Jerry, Judy, I think will be your top three guys regardless, but they want to be able to, to come at you in waves to mix and match. And there are going to be some matchups that they could take advantage of when they have that kind of speed on the field. Yeah, I think so. And that's really, this game has really evolved to be a speed game. You go back and look at the fastest offenses in the league last couple of years, the Niners, the Chiefs, those, those teams are always making the playoffs because they've got speed. It just makes it so difficult to cover them. It limits what you can do. And so having uh, speed dimensions on your offense, it does. It changes the way defenses have to defend you and it, uh, it gives them fewer options. And now all of a sudden your offense can do more things against those fewer options. Kewan Williams got a little banged up on Saturday. So we saw Isang Bassi out there with the first team. Uh, he is a true s- slot defender. I mean, that's one of the things that, that he brings to this team. Um, the, the Broncos, though, I think overall, we talked to Bless Austin after practice. Mm. Broncos have a pretty good depth in, sec- in the secondary. I, I feel like, yeah, you there, there are certain guys that if you have an injury to, they would triple you, right? Mm. But if, if you can keep majority of those starters together, and even in we get into the third, fourth, and fifth guys, I feel pretty good about the depth of the secondary. What do you think? Yeah, I do too. And I, I think anytime you have a chance to get a guy who's a starter for another team to, to be your like fifth or fourth corner, I think that's uh, that's a, that's a good thing. It's it's there's such a dearth of corner talent around the league. The, the disparity there because of of now moving out to all these wide receiver sets and not having enough corners on your team to be able to cover is is evident throughout the league. And uh, you cannot have too many corners. All right. So overall, for this practice, we got pads coming on. Excited about that. Excited specifically to see the running backs in the offensive line. Something that we've noted, but haven't had a chance to really break down because you don't get a, a real sense of it until the pads come on. But so far, what you've seen through the first five days, what are some some big takeaways you have? I think this defense is going to be very good, and I think the national narrative on them slipping back. I think that's not going to be the case. I think they'll be a very good defense. Um, you know, offensively, there's still some kinks to work out, uh, but I think that the offense has what it takes to score the requisite 24 points a game to be to be a playoff caliber football team. Um, the key here is going to be health. You know, can they can they stay healthy? Can this unit stay healthy uh, throughout training camp and that process and make it through a season to to be able to do that? Uh, I think Cortland Sutton has returned to the form that we saw him at pre-injury. 100. Um, you know, I I think that uh, Melvin and and Javante are going to be splitting carries a lot more than the the narrative is out there. I, I think that Melvin's going to be a lot more situationally involved. Javante will get the first carry every game, the starter, if you were this year. But uh, they're going to split carries and then. Uh, you know, defensively, like I said, I think they're going to go after quarterback a little bit more. Um, they're still going to play a similar style to what they did last year. They're just going to be a bit more aggressive about it. Yeah, I feel like the, the defense, I 100% from a national perspective, is not getting the love and credit that it deserves. It's been a top five, definitely top 10 defense over the last several years. I think this the expectation of changing coaches. They think there's going to be a little bit of a fallback. The offense might have to pick up the slack more than they have in the past, but I don't think the defense is going to fall off as dramatically as people talk about. The pass rush is going to be interesting and unique. I I feel like when we get into the season, we're going to continue to sing the praises of DJ Jones Mm -hmm. and how many uh, gaps he eats up out there to allow those guys to work. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to seeing him and Mike Purcell on the field in pads together at the same time, how this offensive line is able to handle that kind of beef down there down low. That's that's a lot of a lot of weight coming at you in those yep. interior gaps. And so it'd be interesting to see how well they hold up. Yep. Especially with the pads coming on. Can't wait to see it. All right, for Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. That's our breakdown of Broncos training camp. As always, check us out, Broncos Country Tonight, wherever you get your podcasts or on KOA from 6 to 9 p.m. weeknights. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Denver's going to win. You can stand up and salute in Denver, and you've got the world champions that live in your town.